All right, we will go ahead and get started. So I'm Stephen Brown. I'm the CEO here of Ledger Gurus. Triple well, let me give you, I want to start with a little bit of a story. Today's webinar is a solution presentation. Um, a year ago, a little over a year ago, my partner here at Ledger Gurus and I uh, decided to collaborate with another partner who was our former marketing lead um, on buying a consumer products business. We wanted to have a, a sandbox, so to speak, to better understand the direct to consumer and consumer products customers whom we serve. So we bought a Italian organic skincare company, a small brand, Sole Toscana. Um, in the diligence, we knew that uh, advertising was challenging, but I don't know that we fully appreciated how challenging it was. Uh, after months of working with uh, agencies and trying to use the tools, we, end, we stumbled across Triple Well, which is a part of this new category of e-commerce analytics. And it's transformed the performance of our marketing. And as we've learned from the financial standpoint, if your marketing spend is off, your, your profitability is going to be off um, for consumer brands. So what I wanted to do today is have our, our friend here, uh, Grant here at Triple, Triple Well, talk through the solution, what it does. And I'm going to interject periodically and share what it's done for the brand that we bought as a uh, opportunity to learn and improve our skills here at Ledger Cruise, as well as diversify our um, business portfolio. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to Grant. Obviously, if you want to ask questions, put them in the chat, put them in the Q&A. Happy to do that as we go. So Grant, tell us about Triple Well, what you guys do and how you can help businesses. Awesome. Thanks, Stephen. Um, thanks, everyone, for joining. My name is Grant. I manage partnerships here at Triple Well, and uh, Ledger Gurus is a trusted partner of ours. Um, really excited to chat with you guys. Basically, Triple Well is all about Shopify e-commerce data. Uh, we were founded in 2020 by um, two founders who are running the e-commerce store themselves. We now have over 7,000 clients. And so we're always building new things. Everything we build is centered around giving our clients the best possible data to grow their business profitably and scale. And uh, yeah, that's us in a nutshell. Um, I have this quick deck and I'll go over a few here. Before iOS 14, um, data was a lot more accurate in platforms. So there wasn't really a need for an attribution tool. Nowadays, there are all sorts of attribution tools. We are one of them. Um, the purpose of an attribution tool is to know where your money is coming in from um, and where you need to put it to uh, help your business. Uh, these are our founders, Max and AJ. Um, they founded the company in Columbus, and uh, we are now partners of Shopify. Shopify recently invested in us last year. And uh, yeah, we're growing pretty rapidly, over 7,000 clients. Essentially, the problem that we solve, every platform wants to take credit. They need your budget in order to grow. Playbio needs your budget. TikTok needs your budget. Facebook needs your budget. Google needs your budget. They're all going to take credit. You need to know where the revenue is coming in from. And we solve that problem, um, amongst other things. And uh, yeah, essentially, multi-channel data, um, product analytics data, audience targeting, the creative analysis, et cetera. We're able to do quite a few different things with our tool and uh, each one of our clients, um, they need our tool for different reasons, various reasons and whatnot. So I'm excited to show you um, what we can offer. So we have a couple different aspects of our tool. I would say that the pixel is a very um, important aspect of our tool when it comes to our client base. Uh, essentially, what the Pixel does is for every single Shopify record, we're able to show you the entire customer journey from start to finish. So this Shopify record, this is a real client of ours. We're allowed to show this. And uh, they've been working with us for quite some time. It's a little bit of a larger store. They sell cosmetics. Uh, and this is a Shopify record. This is what was purchased. We do have a post-purchase survey, which I think is one of the most important aspects of e-commerce right now. And then this is the entire journey from start to finish. And every single click on a website, what was added to cart and every single ad click. The difference between how we report and say Facebook reporting, this is the Facebook reported ROAS. This is what our pixel seeing. Our pixel is the tracking 
uh, aspect for attribution within our tool. Uh, the main differences uh, between our pixel and what the platforms are going to report, iOS 14 has zero impact on our pixel's ability to track. Uh, people opting in or opting out of tracking, none of that impacts our ability to track that journey. Uh, we don't have attribution windows. Every platform has attribution windows, and they typically go off a of last click attribution. Um, our platform pulls in real time. If we're showing this ROAS right here, say this 2.58 on Google compared to 1.94 on uh, that, that Google's reporting, we have to show you all these Shopify records that add up to this ROAS and then each journey uh, within that and how Google, how and when Google was involved. This person clicked on multiple text message ads, multiple Google ads right here, all the way to purchase. Uh, so no attribution windows, all revenues accounted for. Uh, and then we do have seven different attribution models. You're not having to rely on last click. Uh, we do have seven different attribution models depending on the campaign goals or whatnot. You're running on something on TikTok, we have an attribution model for that. Um, you're running prospecting campaigns, we have an attribution model for that. It's not super common now for people to click on a prospecting Facebook ad and buy right away. And that's a big problem that we're solving. So. And the value grant is because of the platforms where they attribute, they're they they might be giving not be giving you the best information because they want you to think that all the purchases came through them. Um, they also have whole to that attribution window. Another way to to describe it is they're not retaining data. They're not seeing across multiple platforms, so their their perspective is a lot narrower. And as you're managing your your marketing spend, you might be getting the wrong indicators of what's actually going on. Yeah, that's exactly right. To clarify, these, you know, Facebook can't see a click on Google. Facebook has view through data as well. So if Facebook thinks that that ad, even if they didn't click on it, if it thinks that that ad drove a sale, they can claim credit if they want. So only about 25% of people opt in to ads tracking. And then they have a seven day window, they go off a last click attribution. So what Facebook does, they take the sample of the 25% of people that do allow them to track and they report a ROAS based on what they see two days later. Um, and that ROAS determines how much spend is on their platform. So if the ROAS is lower, people will pull ad spend off. If the ROAS looks a little better, people will continue to spend on Facebook. It's a public company, they need your ad spend. Same with any platform. So with us, we can see the entire customer journey, every single ad that was clicked on cross channel. Uh, we don't have those limitations and we don't need your ad spend, uh, which is the biggest deal because we have no um, incentives to report higher or lower. All we need to do is report accurate. And uh, that's the goal of the pixel. It does pull all the way down to the ad level for any channel. So I can click on this and I can click on this and it'll pull the actual ads that are running. So for instance, um, Facebook's reporting this to be a 1.73, our pixels showing a 2.05. Now, are we gonna be higher ROAS or lower than Facebook? It totally depends. Um, we are not going to be the company that says, oh, yeah, we're going to show you a higher ROAS. That's not us. It's great when it is higher, but it's a lot more accurate. Um, depending on the attribution model, there are attribution models that will make Facebook look uh, better or worse. So keep that in mind. We're not always going to be higher. It's great when we are, but we are a lot more accurate. And then we do have like a profit column. So this is what Facebook's reporting. This is what we're reporting. And then here's profit based on cost of goods sold, shipping, handling fees, et cetera. You can enter a lot of store costs so that we can get down to profit um, at the very, and you know, at the actual ad level. And then we can track new customer metrics. So like what's our new customer CPA for ad? What's our new customer CPA um, for the whole channel? Um, what's our new customer ROAS? And then you are able to track you know, a lot of other things with this uh, columns button, you can track a 
number of different things that you may not be able to track, or I know you can't track in Google Analytics or in platform, um, things like that. So it is customizable. Um, one of the biggest parts of our tool though, is this post-purchase survey. So the clicks are one thing. What we've found is there are a lot of people influenced by ads they're seeing that aren't actually clicking. They aren't clicking on the TikTok ad. They aren't clicking on the Facebook ad as much. It comes with emails and remarketing. So they'll see it, they'll be influenced by it, then they'll go via direct or they'll go through Klaviyo and you'll never know um, which ads are driving revenue. So we installed a post-purchase survey and I can't stress this enough. If you're not using a post-purchase survey, you need to be as soon as possible. For this client in the last 30 days, we've attributed almost $40,000 to Facebook based on people's answers of what led them to buy. And now not a single one of these people clicked on a Facebook ad. So if I click into here, every single one of these people said Facebook is what led them to buy. That's the question, what led you to purchase today? You can also ask a question, hey, how did you hear about us? Um, however you want to customize it. But basically, this is what was purchased for this particular order. They filled out which of the following led you to purchase today, Facebook. And then this is what was purchased. And this was the whole customer journey. So this person saw the ad on Facebook. Then they went directly to the website, triobeauty.com and bought. Now, would you ever have any knowledge whatsoever that Facebook was involved with this purchase without a post-purchase survey? Absolutely not. So click-based is one thing, but with a 40% response rate, we're sourcing $40,000 that wasn't click-based. And you can do the math. That's you know closer to $80,000 or more that's being attributed to Facebook that was never click-based. So this, ad, or this channel's working tremendously better than what the clicks are gonna tell you. And the only way to get to that is with a post-purchase survey. And I know there's other platforms, like we have a couple platform competitors that say view through data is, um, you know, we, we can track view through data. It's always gonna be modeled. No one really knows which ads are influencing the buying decision unless you ask people, unless they click on it as well. Someday someone will figure it out maybe. Um, they're gonna be very wealthy, but the post-purchase survey is far and away the most valuable um, way to uh, track that in my opinion. So let me let me share some data from my screen and talk about why this um, matters from a financial management standpoint. We see a lot of our customers who will um, spend, you know, if we, we go back to the 2020, 2021, even in early 2022 days, um, just spending without thinking. And I think with uh, tightening consumer demand, less performance in marketing, uh, there needs to be higher, uh, a more efficient marketing spend, or you will spend yourself out of business. Um, the business that I was mentioning, Sol Sole Toscana, uh, this is about a month after we put triple well on so you can see our ROAS were garbage um we were getting uh 0.6 according to facebook and 0.3 in reality according to triple well um our new customer ROAS was terrible um and so we really uh our operating par partner dug in um i'll i'll turn it back to grant and kind of let him walk through how that works but you can see now uh, this month, our new customer ROAS is at 1.16. Um, you can see that Facebook and Google are still giving us false sense of, of reality. Uh, it's a smaller brand, so we don't have a, you know, a, a wide range of channels. But um, my partner, what he said is by using the data in Triple Well, he is able to get much more um, and, and kind of using that as a feedback loop for optimization. He's able to get much better results than trying to use the native tools in Facebook and Google alone. And so as we've been on this journey with this brand that we bought, um, the, the light that went on for me as a financial person, a financial professional is like, brands have to be good with their marketing spend. They will not be prof profitable and not be su su sustainable. So an attribution tool is really good. So Grant, why don't you kind of show us a little bit about how you kind of talk, um, touched on it, but 
talk us through here the ad, the campaigns, how someone might use that data to decide how to manage their campaigns. Yeah, yeah. So the key, if you are using, if you're not using a tool at all, you're using Google Analytics and platform metrics, there are a lot of data points here that you can use to make decisions, like new customer CPA. I mean, you just, if you don't have that, um, versus if you do have it, that's a game changer. You know, businesses rely on new customers. Uh, but, you know, looking at this, if I sort by campaigns, I can see this is a 2.83 return in total impact. This is one of our attribution models that takes into account post-purchase survey data. So what you can do is you can come in here, Facebook's showing a 2.13, even more so, the Facebook ROAS here is a 1.42, we're seeing a 2.46 with 105 purchases. So what you wanna do is look at that and be like, okay, this campaign's outperforming um, what Facebook is reporting. Let's get more budget into it. Um, you can you know, be very simple when you first start using Triple Whale. It's like, well, let's follow um, what's going on. We had a client, Portland Leather Goods. They made $5 million last holiday season because we were showing a ROAS that looks great compared to what Facebook was reporting. This is, you know, a $70 million brand. They have money to play with, but they said, hey, we're going to test this one ad and this one product build over the holiday season. Um, they made $5 million. So that's the grand scale, but that's, you know, how this pixel works because this is a 1.47 here. We're seeing a 2.54, which is profitable for them. You can see how profitable that is. And what they can do is just, funnel budget into this, which they would never funnel budget into um, had they not had triple whale. And so you can see the new customer CPA is great. And um, yeah, that's a very simple starting um, strategy when using triple whale. Like let's follow um, what's, what's driving revenue and see how that worked for us. We also can look at all your channels together. So how they interact with one another. If you're using a lot of different channels, email marketing, Facebook, um TikTok, et cetera. We have a lot of different integrations. This client uses these ones in particular, um, but we do interact with or we do integrate with most uh, channels as well. And this is great to see that. This is our creative cockpit here. So what it does is it analyzes the performance of every single creative that you're running. Now, for this creative, for instance, Facebook is reporting that this creative drove 44 grand or $44,000 in revenue in the last 30 days, our pixel is showing $36,000 in revenue. There's a big difference there. But for every single creative, you're able to see true performance um, from what our pixel's seeing. What that allows you to do is I can, you know, sort by all my creatives and prioritize specific creatives that are working best in the last 30 days. If I need to see how well a creative performs in the last 30 days, or longer, however, you know, you whatever time frame you want to look at, you can see that. You can look at ad spend versus pixel ROAS versus CPA, uh, new customer CPA, overall revenue, overall purchases. You can plot that out to see how things perform over time. Also, one thing that this customer figured out, ads where someone, it's a cosmetics brand, when people are scrolling on Facebook and TikTok, you know, you have a split second to capture their attention. When they use an ad with someone using the product in the thumbnail, it transforms the performance for them because people right away know what it is. There's no, you know, you have such a quick time frame to get these people's attention. So they know which ads perform best. When they go to build new ads, they know how what the new ads need to look like. And then if an ad stops performing as well, they know right away and they can get a new creative and build new ads and whatnot. So yeah, you can build a lot of filters into this tool as well. So if you need to know how your, um, you know, top of funnel ads perform or which top of funnel ads perform best, you, you'll be able to find that out. This works for Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, and Twitter. So this is a great tool here. And then we have a lot of business insights. So business insights, there's a lot regarding LTV or lifetime value of a customer. Um, we look at a lot of audiences. So you can target and build custom audiences. We look at product analytics, which ads are most profitable, which ads um, have inventory, uh, which ads or which products drive the highest LTV. 
So like for product analytics, for instance, there are, uh, you know, there's a lot of data between all these and we can calculate the combined ROAS. So if I add this column here and I look at pixel ROAS, what it's gonna do is gonna take combined ad spend across all channels. And then I can sort by my most profitable products right here or my lowest CPA or my highest LTV. Um, contribution margin, inventory, et cetera. We'll be able to see that there as well. Here's a place you can build audiences. So we have our own audiences that you can target on Facebook or download into a CSV, um, or you can create your own as well based on you know certain characteristics, segments, uh, activity, and you can target those audiences as well. So a lot of these insights are built for lifetime value of a customer and then um, you know, driving that second order, third order, et cetera. And last, probably important section for um, this call, we do have a lot of cost settings per store. So if you really like, as a client of Ledger Gurus, it's all about profitably growing your business. That's the name of the game and numbers. Um, this section will be really critical to understand the exact profitability of your store and different aspects of your store. And uh, this is where you can enter a lot of custom expenses and cost of goods sold and handling fees so that you can just, you know, be very um, in the know or and aware of what's most profitable. And the last section is the summary page. Our, our tools on limited usage. It's not like one user can use it. It's unlimited usage. We build per store. Um, we'll run a demo for anyone. We'd love to run a demo. Uh, and then you know this uh, summary page brings in all channels into one location. So you can have it all in one spot. You're not having to log in to a number of different uh, platforms. And then, uh, yeah, there's a lot of custom metrics that you can build. So like this stats here, we can look at profit of ad spend net profit, blended ROAS, Amazon sales, new customer metrics across all channels. And then you can basically build any custom metric you can think of here. People build thousands and thousands of metrics um, really quickly. So let me let me kind of talk about how this is applied. Um, with the brand I was mentioning, uh, I am acting as the CFO with my operating partner who does all the marketing and fulfillment. Uh, we we took the data from our financials and we used that to feed our budget. Um, give a little plug for my my budget template. I'm gonna release an update, but we feed the budget and um, uh, the 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 data to model our budget, and then we've used this budgeting data as long as with the real the real um, the real data of our results from our financials to model into uh, triple well. And what this allows my operating partner to do is not only kind of look at his return on ad spend and um, all the key metrics that you need uh, with digital marketing, but he also is able to have a, a sense of what's going on from a profitability perspective. In the last couple of months, we've really made a shift. Um, I'm working on developing a, a profit advisory service, and he and I have been kind of um, exploring some concepts of how to implement that, both using Triple Well as well as the other tools that Ledger Gurus provides. So he will use this to provide to get a real time uh, insight on what's going on, what we think our our net profit is um, as we look at that against uh, the performance of what's going on, um, and we do this by taking and implementing the the different uh, spend expectations in our in this cost setting. So we use the cost of goods sold information that we have that comes out of our inventory uh, team. We use um, kind of some shipping projections on on how that's going to look. Um, and then a lot of what we model is in our custom expenses. So we'll go ahead and we'll model in all the, a lot of the different things that we expect. Now this is a fairly small and simpler business, but we do feel like this model could be applied to a variety of 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 businesses and that that thereby allows us to have a real-time 
insight on what's going on. So as we go about, um, a lot of our customers will say, I want real-time financial information. And I'm gonna hear to, I'm gonna hear to, to to break the news to you. That's really hard to achieve. You're not gonna get that through your general ledger. What your QuickBooks or other accounting software is providing you is that is the the final source of to, of truth. But when you're operating your business month to month, you're usually using operational systems. So we use Triple Well integrated with all of other systems under your Shopify, with all of our ads, with all of and then modeling the the financials that we use from uh from the the QuickBooks, from our budget, we we use that data to model back into Triple Well, and it gets us a pretty good sense of what's going on. I mean, within a very close margin of error, and so we get a very good sense of how to achieve profitability through our ad spend. And then we look at the data and we kind of push that back into the budget and take the financial actual financial data, push that back into the budget, push it back into Triple Well. So it becomes a virtuous circle of insight for us to drive a more efficient spend. And as I noted before, our our ROAS, our new customer ROAS was like 0.2, now it's 1.16. We're still like to see that go up. And the bottom line is we're able to, we've been able to gradually improve the performance of that business. One, by looking at the data, looking at the numbers, using it to make better decisions, and then my partner actually using the real-time data around the ads to optimize and decide which ads to put more money into, which ones not not to put in money to. So there's my little testimonial of, of how Triple Well, in conjunction with the other financial processes that we've been able to do, has allowed us to uh, improve, significantly improve the profitability of this business that we've we've purchased and we expect it will continue to be a key source of information to guide us into um, continuous profitability. What questions do you have, if any? Now would be a good point for anybody to hit, hit us or hit up your questions. Oh, that was pretty impressive, Stephen. Looking at all those numbers, it's wild. Well, I'm hoping that next year it'll be even better. Okay, Rowdy, he's got your hand raised. You can, you want to feel free to ask it over the uh audio if you'd like or you can type in there whatever you prefer prefer hi can you hear me yeah yes we can so uh i'm really curious to know for businesses that are not heavy on ads for example uh we're using only retargeting ads on facebook but we have clavio we have affiliate marketing and so on how can we use Triple Way um, to have a sense of our profitability on a daily basis and whether there's going to be a different packages for different, for different businesses, the ones who are using ads heavily versus the ones who are not? No, that's a great question. Um, let me show you this. We do have a way to track affiliates. So any influencers or affiliate websites we can track? Uh, if you see value in that. And then, yeah, if you're not heavy on ads, we do have the ability to show you this summary page um, where you can just sign up for the summary page. Now, what it's going to do is bring in all your channels into one location. It'll update in real time, et cetera. Um, and it's nice to have. But if tracking and attribution isn't a big priority, you can sign up just for the summary page and get insights here. Um, if that's valuable to you. If you do see value in tracking, you know, cross journey, great. If not, you don't have to add the pixel. It's an add-on. Okay, so uh, with tracking, for example, um, are there like different levels of uh, tracking? For example, if we're only using Clivio and uh, basic uh, retargeting ads on Facebook, uh, will 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 that be something different than someone who's like heavily using ads in terms of like the the monthly fee for triple triple whale? Yeah, let me pull this up. If you're not heavily investing in ads, I'd probably recommend just going with the summary page. And it's based our pricing is based on last twelve months revenue right here. So wherever your last twelve months Shopify revenue is, that's what determines the price. If it's under a million, it's a hundred dollars a month to use the summary page. Um, if you wanted to add the pixel, it's three hundred dollars a month. You got to add these together. Obviously, if your store is making more money, 
and that the pricing uh, changes a little bit. Um, but yeah, we have different options. This is all a la carte and we can't sell this right now. So. Okay. And uh, you mentioned like a demo or something. So is that something your team offers to uh, understand how we could uh, make the best out of the platform? Of course. Yeah. We'd love to uh, get you on a demo. If you prefer, you can uh, go right to our website and ask to get a demo. Triplewhale.com. And then if you select get a demo, you can get on the line with our team. Um, if you don't mind mentioning to our sales team, just so we I can track it back to uh, Ledger Gurus, either email me grant at triplewhale.com, let Ledger Gurus know um, if, you, if possible. However, you can notify us that you're going through the demo process so I can track it properly. But yeah, if you go to our website, it's like get a demo and then just let us know that uh, um, you booked one, then that, that's a great way to go about it and talk to our team and they'll uh, see what you need. Okay, you. sounds good. Thank you so much. Yeah, my pleasure. On that point, I want to just bring up the uh, the integrations page here and just highlight the different sources of data that you can pull in. So you're looking at the store of the brand that I've, I've been using as a case study here. Um, so we have Facebook, uh, Google Ads, Google Analytics, Klaviyo. Um, we haven't dived into some of these other areas, as you can see. So here's a here's all the different data sources you can pull in to triple well um grant well I, I would love to talk a little bit about amazon and what triple well does there now we're not we don't have an amazon store currently that's on our roadmap for this brand um why don't you go ahead and bring up an amazon store and and talk about what triple do, well does with the amazon um and while i kind of wrap up you can see that you know the a lot of the TikTok, Pinterest, Snapchat, some of the other things that are uh, very common as well. So Grant, why don't we talk just briefly about Amazon and what Triple Well does with Amazon data? Yeah, and uh, we just added Bing, a Bing integration while we're on this call. I got the uh, notification via Slack. We can track other um, channels, uh, send uh, traffic to your website. So if it's labeled with the UTM and it sends traffic to your website, we can track the revenue and all those journeys, like this is say DuckDuckGo right here. We can track that journey and when DuckDuckGo was involved. So we're not just limited to our um, to our uh, integrations, uh, but yeah, Amazon will pull in a lot of metrics into this uh, page. So you can see specific metrics and then you can build custom metrics off of these metrics. So it's not like custom attribution for Amazon, but you are able to do some things with your data. Um, a lot of that happens on the Amazon website. The key for us is we can track anything on your website and do anything with that. But if on other websites, as far as tracking goes, we just don't have that capability, obviously, because there are other websites. But uh, anything Shopify, on a Shopify site, we got you covered. And then, yeah, the Amazon data looks like this here. And now, with we'll Amazon Grant, correct me if I'm wrong, you're essentially sucking data in from the Amazon platform uh but amazon's kind of self-contained so the attribution is really based on what amazon's telling us We're, there's nothing there's nothing uh, independent attribution that you're doing is that correct yeah um it happens on the amazon site so we can't really do much with that so we can improve attribution if a sale comes from your website all day long but yeah amazon's just its own entity and they have their own attribution. We're pulling it in ours. So in the case of Amazon, it's it's putting it in one place. You have all of your data in one place. You get a better perspective of what's going on with your store. But they're kind of a, a closed system right now. So you, there's not a, the ability to do some of that inter, independent attribution that you've you've got, uh, say, on a Shopify with Facebook and Google Ads, et cetera. Yep um other questions hey um grant if you mentioned it earlier but maybe let just to wrap up if somebody wanted to know more about triple well what's the best way for them to, to connect with triple well and you know look, take another the next step yeah you can email me grant at triple whale 
and I'll get you right to the right person to get a demo set up. Or you can go to our website and select get a demo. Um, if you do go through that process, please let the sales team know that you're working with Ledger Gurus or email me granted triple whale that you're going through the demo process so I can track it back to Ledger Gurus so they get referral credit. Um, but yeah, either go through our website or email me granted triple whale and we'll get you uh, taken care of with a uh, free demo. We'd love to you know meet with you and determine your needs. And and Grant, maybe just to wrap up, uh, any final success, overall success stories? You've mentioned a couple, but you guys are growing very rapidly right now, and you're, you're referred to quite often in the industry. Any way to wrap up why um, why you feel like companies are having such success with you? Yeah, we have 30 new products in the last 60 days. Um, this landscape's ever-changing. We do have case studies on our website. What you're going to find, though, is more and more, uh, it's less click-based and more so we need to get a post-purchase survey. I think right now the landscape is ever-changing, but having a post-purchase survey and all that we built off of that is, you know, what's moving the needle the most for our customers right now. You saw that one client, they had about $80,000 plus in the last 30 days attributed to Facebook. We have three TikTok case studies on our website. The only reason why, I think we have four now, the only reason why is because of a post-purchase survey. So um, we're in this every day. We're doing e-com every day. We have so many clients. We have very forward-thinking founders. Um, if you do work with us, you're going to be in the, you know, working with a company that's at the forefront of innovation in the e-com space. And uh, we're always rolling out new products to help. So um yeah there's a, a lot that we can provide for resources and things like that okay well thank you everybody for attending today uh check out triple well it's a solution we we recommend and thank you grant for the time and assistance yeah my pleasure uh thanks a lot everyone um it was it was awesome to meet with you all and yeah i look forward to hearing uh hearing back from some of you and yeah thanks again all right with that we'll wrap things up thank you Bye.